Welcome to PLM and Vinyl, the webcast for everyone interested in SAP PLM and surrounding topics. In our show, you will see and hear the latest updates from SAP, Senate and our partner products, along with some customer interviews. And now meet your hosts, Paul Cassidy and Sascha Schwenker. Hi everybody, this is a brand new series of PLM and Vinyl. Um, it's again Paul Cassidy, Sascha Schwenker. Paul, it took us a while to get back to recording. What happened? What do you think? It did. Um, I don't know. I think like many bands who have some initial success, and let's be honest, we've had quite great, a reaction. Great, yeah. great, great reaction. Uh, we maybe got caught up in the rock and roll lifestyle a little bit. Yeah. Kind of lost our muse and needed to go off and refine ourselves, find a new direction. And so... Mm -hmm. We are we're back. We got some new material. We have got some new material. Interestingly, today, not really brand new material. New material, but on an older topic, on a vintage topic, I would vintage. say. We're doing covers today. We do a cover. Yes, almost we do a cover, yes. We do a cover. So what is our topic of the day? Uh, topic today is SAP document management system, as I say. Uh, a classic. A classic, classic, yeah. really a classic. Uh, and another classic, uh, version and revision management. So you can now ask us, hey, why are we talking about this? Uh, the reason is, this is really coming up still in every project where we implement either PPM with document management, uh, workflow with document management, or even ECTR, Engineering Control Center, with document management. So we just finished the blueprint uh, at a customer, and exactly this topic came up again. And I remember, hey, I drew this picture already 100 times on a whiteboard at several occasions. So I thought this might be a good start of our new series here. We start low, we start easy, but this is a topic for every company who is going to start with document, who start with manage, cat manage, data management, with any kind of document management, they should be interested in this. So this is really your go-to song for your encores. This is the one the crowd always cheer for at the end that, of the concert. That's, that's the song we play at every Blueprint session. Yeah, every, every Blueprint everybody session. Everybody knows the words. Everybody knows, actually that's the interesting thing. Uh, if we are getting into this Blueprint session, it's always new. For, yeah. for us, we always cheer. But for the customer, it's always a new always topic. Always fresh. And, and obviously, this can be uh, interpreted in different directions. So uh, what we are showing here right now is more the mainstream. But we have a lot of customers who take their own style in this topic. So they take their own cover up and uh, they implement it slightly different. Very good. So it's PLM and vinyl. So I didn't bring any vinyl, uh -huh. but uh, I, I believe you did. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I'm, pretty I'm, good not, one here. I'm not familiar with this one, Sasha. Yeah, so uh, I have an one from my really, I would say, earlier childhood. Okay. Uh, it's Grönemeyer. Grönemeyer and the LP is called Ö. Ö. It's Ö. Ö. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I don't really want to talk about this a lot. So I have a theory about this. Tell me. Um, so I think you're going back to what feels good in your your culture and, and in in your upbringing in Germany mm. because things went very very badly in the World Cup. Oh, <laughs> and no. I, I did that's, not want to bring that, this up. That's what you bring here up. I did not want to bring this up. Okay, but that's what I think is going on here. Uh, okay, yes, you're you're absolutely right. Things didn't work out as perfect <laughs> as we hoped in the World Cup. No, not uh, as perfect. Yeah, yeah. And uh, maybe I needed a little bit of... Uh, reassurance, a bit of comfort. Yeah, a little bit soul. Understandable. Yeah. You you guys were that so bad I, that... So uh, while I was in Germany, actually, yeah. uh, the last See. couple of weeks, uh, I bought several LPs at a flea market. And uh, this was one of them. So, Ö, and uh, as I said, I don't want to emphasize this uh, way more, but uh, German interpreter Herbert Grönemeyer, German artist Herbert Grönemeyer, uh, or Grönemeyer, uh, he had some good songs here in the US as well, but uh, yeah. probably nobody knows him here. No, so, much. so I looked at some of the songs on this. Yeah. Uh, uh, Heimat, Herber, Stachwachen, 
Frag Verdic. I think that was the midfield you fielded in the second game of the World Cup, wasn't it? <laughs> and that's where your problems are. I, I don't even recognize the songs <laughs> you're just telling me. I didn't here. recognize their performances. Uh, so I think that the most uh, important one and the most famous one was Was soll das? Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Was soll das? I could almost sing it now. Yeah, Was soll das? All right. Um, Very good. This was the vinyl part. Let's this get back to... Uh, PLM. Yes, what get away from all of that. Back all to right. the PLM. So, um, document management system version and revision control. Very good. How we usually explain this is in uh, kind of this table here. So, and uh, this table explains it for drawings, but this is applicable for every kind of specification. You can, every everywhere where you have... All uh, sorts of product documentation. All sorts of product documentation. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Uh, where you have a uh, version here inside SAP and a uh, revision inside SAP. Okay. And a lot of companies, they use document management internal revision system, and then they synchronize this revision with the material revision. But right now for us, we, we just focus completely on the document side. Okay. Yeah. So uh, just get the started. So let's imagine you have an uh, you create a drawing, and obviously there are three 3D parts involved. There could be visual enterprise involved, but we fully concentrate on the drawing piece here right now. Yeah. Um, this drawing has a drawing number. This drawing has a draw drawing type like DRW. Uh, it has some other key elements, uh, but it has also a version. And inside SAP version management, uh, you can use numeric or alphanumeric. So we implemented both. In this case, I go with numeric uh, version and alphanumeric uh, uh, revision scheme. Okay. So then this is assigned to a change number and it goes its normal way. Yeah. So the, the, the drawing uh, goes through the design phase and you see we do this here in 2D. Uh, very simple, they, they created a disk for example. And then this disk goes to uh, in the status network and through the workflow, which we are also not showing here, but it ends up somewhere maybe in the prototype department. Okay. Yeah. So what happens now if the prototype type department uh, said, oh, this is not okay. So uh, because, and that's something how we usually explain this to our customers, because it left engineering, where they have it in work, for example, and there are normally some uh, steps in between in work and PT or prototype, it left engineering. So that's the reason why we demand uh, we create a new version. Okay. Yeah. So this new version, the new version number one, uh, would be most likely uh, shown here inside the title block. Um, but uh, <coughs> at the end, we create a new version. You see here the document number, the uh, type, the change number always stays the same. True. And what you see here, interestingly, is there is still no revision. Yeah. yeah. So in a lot of other PLM systems, we see that the revision, revision is getting assigned at the beginning of the process. If you really use traditional out-of-the-box <coughs> SAP revision scheme, the revision gets assigned at the end of the process, which makes a lot of sense if you really think about this. So let's assume that we have a new version. This also ends up in PT, and what's happening, it also fails. Okay. So the, a new revision is a new version is getting created. Uh, 02 in this case, and this makes its way all the way to release. So it passed prototype, it goes to release, and at this stage, at the release stage, and obviously this is something you can be define or configure in the customizing or in the configuration, uh, at this stage, usually the revision gets assigned. So it's happening after the drawing, uh, or in this case, the, the object is really released. And again, this is something you can uh, uh, do way, way earlier if you want. We are just showing here one way uh, how version and revision management could work. Yeah. Yeah. So um, with this one, uh, what we do in a lot of projects, we set, for example, automatically with a switch from the newer version uh, to release, we flip the old ones which are not used to obsolete, rejected, or some other status. Sure. Yeah. So now comes something else inside SAP, because uh, if you now say, okay, this is in, uh, in production right now, so revision number A is in production, we are producing it, we are chugging along, and now somebody from production comes to us and say, I would like to have a change based on your revision A. Okay. Yeah? So what's happening now is the version management continues, 
And that's something also different uh, between SAP and a lot of other PLM system, which would start over with 00. SAP always continues. So version goes always 00 to 99 or AA to ZZ if you want, okay. or dash yeah. to ZZ. Um, and you see here, then the game starts over. Obviously, if we have a completely new change, uh, we have a different change number here. This goes also to prototype and let's so Let's assume this fails again. What's happening here? Uh, create a new version, version number four, and this makes its way all the way to release. Okay. Yeah? If it makes it all the way the, to the release, as we said already before, this will get the revision B. Yep. Yeah? And as I said before, this revision here could be also considered as the material revision. So in some cases, we synchronize this revision, this document revision B with the material revision because this symbolizes, oh, it's a new status or it's a new state in manufacturing. So that uh, um, the, if you look at the material master that you see, ah, this is revision B. So in a lot of cases, uh, or in some cases, we saw a B here and this, we would potentially use even the same change number to create the B on the material master side as well. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, if this is happening, uh, in this case, we would have two released versions inside the system, A and B. And then that's the reason why we have a little bit space here. In a lot of cases, with releasing the newer one, in this case, the 04 to release, the old one goes to, for example, super superseded or obsolete again, or re no, not rejected in this case. Uh, and this, this one could go in this case to obsolete. So, with this one, you see here, we have always the latest one is, uh, is released. So there's only one released version out there. And this really helps our customers to see uh, what is the actual up-to-date version inside the system. And then if you do the same thing here again, uh, a new one we are at release C here already. It waits, makes this way all the way to release. And the old one goes back to superseded, same thing like this one. So over time, when you get more and more and more revisions uh, on your drawings, um, then you can see or you can see what's the latest one. Just look for the released one, and the, the released one is always the latest one, and this indicates what is the current revision uh, most likely in production. Very good. Yep. So this is how we usually implement this, and as I said before, there are many variations of this one. First of all. Uh, not everybody is following in-work uh, PT obsolete or in-work prototype release. So there's uh, in between there are a lot of variations here. What we implement really depending on how the customer would like to implement this. Do they emphasize a prototype? If they don't do this, then there might be some other stages like to check or checked, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's really the the simplified version of uh, version and revision management. That certainly makes sense to me unlike Germany's selection of an aging midfield unable to handle the press with their older legs. Yes. But I'm not going to wallow in your pain. Okay, so let's come back to version and revision management. <laughs> let's not talk about uh, soccer too much. So this is it, uh, version and revision management. This is probably one of our shorter PLM yep. and vinyl sessions here. And more painful. But, uh, yes. Um, but still, uh, version revision management, uh, super important topic. It's coming up in almost every project where we have uh, document management. And not everybody is using this this way, but if you want to have a starting point, this might be something. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.